Hi, and welcome to Inside the Booth. I'm your host, David Arena. As I sent out my promo last week to uh, do a weekly Bible study, and it's going to be out of the first, first John. This is how it's going to go down. I'm going to read it. I'm going to express what I feel God is sharing with me in my heart to you guys. And then you can uh, make any comments underneath and let me know if this inspired you at all. Or maybe it caused you to think about your life more. It's a new thing. So here we go. 1 John chapter 1, starting at verse 1. It reads, What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. And the life was manifested, and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and what we have heard we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write so that our joy may be made complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and announced to you that God is light and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as He Himself is, the light. We have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and his word is not in us John is writing to the church to let them know that if they remain in the light and Jesus is the light and there is no darkness in him Jesus never sinned There is not one account of Jesus ever committing a sin. And sin, sin is separation from God. So God has his boundaries and he commands us to live within those boundaries. But the problem is we're not perfect enough to live in those boundaries on our own. We don't have what it takes, but Jesus, who the scripture says, knew no sin, but became sin for us upon the cross. So, Jesus, God's only Son, the firstborn of many, when He came, He came to proclaim the Father's love to us, but also to show us how to live our lives that would bring glory to God, the Father. But He also came to show us that we don't have to do this on our own. That in Jesus, we can have eternal life with the Father and with our Lord and Savior. So what I want to point out to you and what I believe God is saying to us is that in order to have fellowship, complete fellowship with Him, we must believe in the one and only Son of God. And, And Christmas time is coming, you know, churches are getting ready to celebrate the birth of Christ and to recognize where our faith comes from. But I pray that this would not be 
a religious thing or a, a going through the motion, it's Christmas, I'm going to you know, the Christmas Eve service. God is calling us is to Himself and in order to be with Him we have to come to that place of recognition that Jesus is the only way. It says, verse 6 and 7, If we say that we have fellowship with Him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. What does it mean to walk in darkness? It means we're living a secret life. We put on the mask and we, we, we think, hey, I'm a Christian, and we wear a mask and we hide everything that we do in secret. But you know, God already sees what we do in secret. We can't hide from Him. If we say that we have fellowship with Him, and yet walk in darkness. Listen, I was there. I said I had fellowship with the Lord, but I had a secret addiction that I didn't know how to get rid of. And I lived in darkness. I wore a mask that said, hey, I'm a, I'm a Christian, I'm a pastor. But deep down inside of my heart, I had a secret that I didn't want to share with anybody because I was afraid of abandonment, rejection. I was even afraid that God was going to reject me. But he already knew what I was doing and, and he loved me so much he pursued me he pursued me he didn't give up on me and so if we say we have fellowship with God and, and walk in darkness then we lie and we don't practice the truth and a lot of us are in that place or we've come out of that place where we think we have fellowship with God but we're still living a secret life and we're really not fully surrendered to God. We're not fully giving ourselves over to Him. And, you know, verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light as He Himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus His Son cleanses us from all sin. That is good news. When Jesus went to the cross, all His blood was spilt upon the cross. I want to challenge you to watch The Passion of the Christ, directed by Mel Gibson, because that is so intense that if you need to visualize what Jesus did for you on the cross, that is the perfect movie to watch. Because Mel Gibson didn't withhold anything. He just told this story of Jesus' last three hours in such a way, how can you not feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit saying, Walk with me in the light. Be in the light where I am. So, Jesus' blood cleanses us from all sin. If we receive and believe what He did on the cross, it says in Romans chapter 10, if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart what, that Jesus is the Son of God and that He rose again on the third day, we will be saved. That is a promise. And you don't have to try to earn your way to heaven. It's so beautiful. It's so freeing to know that you don't have to earn your way to heaven. That Jesus did all the work for us. All we have to do is believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. And we will be saved. That's it. That's the first step. After that is building a relationship with Him. Reading the Bible. Seeking Him out. And trusting what the Word of God says what the Bible says to be true, and we just trust it and obey. The blood of Jesus is so powerful, it can heal us, it can cleanse us from all of our sins, or the separation, it brings us back to the Father, and it mends and restores our relationship with God. That is how powerful the blood of Jesus is. So if we have fellowship with Jesus, and we trust Him fully. We stop living a secret lifestyle behind closed doors and we are open and honest with Jesus and open and honest with our brothers in Christ and our sisters in Christ because it says that in the light we have fellowship with one another. True fellowship can take place. And then it says in verse 8 and 9, if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. 
If any one of us says, oh, I've never sinned, I've done nothing wrong, then the truth of God's word is not in us. But it says in verse 9, if we confess our sins, listen to this, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is faithful. Jesus is faithful. Even when we are unfaithful and we have no faith, He remains faithful. My friends, my brothers and sisters, the subscribers to Inside the Booth, here it is. If we confess our sins, Jesus is faithful and righteous to forgive us. Some of us may not even understand forgiveness because we don't know how to forgive and we've never been forgiven. But I tell you, believe Jesus at His words and you trust what He says and you obey His command to love and you honor Him. He is faithful to forgive you of all of your sins, all of the things you have ever done. He can forgive you of all those things because His blood is that powerful. And you will know forgiveness. And even if you don't even know how to forgive yourself, because you may have made some choices that you're like, oh, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Jesus can forgive you of those choices. And His power of forgiveness can help you forgive yourself. Really, all this is about is knowing who you are in Jesus and understanding your identity and your value and your self-worth in Christ. Father God, in the name of Jesus, for everyone who just heard the scriptures through the reading of your word in the first epistle of John, in, in chapter 1, I pray that you would touch them, bless them, anoint them in Jesus' name. Thanks for watching. This is David Arena from Inside the Booth. Till next week.